Hello, hello. My name is Solmaz and you are listening to the Tabling Thoughts podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to talk about my experiences as a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. The little points that I notice in my clients' life that each of them affect the quality of their lives and their relationships enormously. And for some reason, they don't pay that much of attention to those points. And of course, confidentiality is always there. You are listening to the seventh episode of Tabling Thoughts, which is published in April 2024. And I'm going to talk about fear. I'm talking about that toxic fear that comes exactly when you want to take action. When you want to do something that you have been waiting for the longest time to get the result. The fear of being judged. The fear of being failed. The fear of being behind. Those kind of fears that not only they don't serve us, but also they put us in the most miserable and at the same time, vulnerable place. When I talk with my clients regarding to different goals, as Iranian, it's our new year right now. It's the beginning of spring and we're celebrating new year. And there are more resolutions to work on. When we talk about different kinds of goals to set and habits to implement, the first barrier comes to their mind is the fear. The big monster that have been fed with their critical whisperer. You cannot do it. You will fail. You are not like others. You're old. You're extremely unexperienced. Go on and on and on. You know, my friends, the causes of fear can differ from person to person and from circumstances to circumstances. However, at its roots, fear frequently results from uncertainty, the unknown the traumatic experiences or a sensation of being in danger or losing control over one's life. Evolutionary, this kind of reasons also come into play because fear has always been a survival technique used to keep human beings safe from harm. But I have a brand new information for you. We are not our ancestors who used to live in caves. We don't need to be worried that in the middle of night, a wild animal will come and will attack us and will eat us alive. So that kind of survival fear could be controlled and managed by our minds. The mind that is cautious and could distinguish the real dangers and the assumptions. To look deeply, fear is a complicated emotion influenced by our unique experiences and perceptions, as well as our evolutionary past. As I said, our ancestors who used to live in caves. Fear is fundamentally a result of our innate desire to protect ourselves. But throughout human history, those with more awareness of possible threats and hazards have had higher chance of surviving and dispersing their genes. However, fear isn't just a reaction to upcoming danger. It may also be the result of, as I said, uncertainty about the future. Sometimes we may experience the fear of injury or terrible experiences in the past may cause this kind of uncertainty. Certainty. Moreover, I should mention social and cultural variables frequently have an impact on fear. Our social surrounding, cultural values, and upbringing shape how we perceive or react to threats. For instance, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of social disapproval. These kind of fears are all ingrained in us due to cultural standards and expectations. In this day and age, my friends, there are many more things to be afraid of. Of course there are, such as complicated socioeconomic problems, international wars, environmental changes, sudden inflations, interest rates, or even new technological developments like the fear of AI. 
how everyone is reacting to it, right? The quick speed of change in the world can make people feel more insecure and fearful, making them feel scared and anxious. So all being said, we talked about the root causes of different kind of fears in us, right? From our background, from traumatic experiences, our genes, the social cultural changes and everything. But let's see what can we do with this kind of fear. As I said in the beginning of this episode, this fear is toxic. It's not kind of fear that can serve us. We need to be able to monitor it, track it, identify it, and manage it. That being said, acknowledging your fear is the first step toward taking action. Many people try to avoid it. They try to deny it. And they think doing so will buy time to get rid of it. Not knowing that denial and avoidance can make the fear worse and more difficult to deal with. Whatever you deny, whatever you avoid will come and obsess you, right? So the first step will be acknowledge it, accept it, it's there. I'm not talking about embracing it, but acknowledging it. The second step will be to determine the origin of your fear. Make an effort to identify the precise source of your worry and fear. Finding the origin of this fear may not be the direct solution, but will help you to know what triggers you. You need to figure it out. Is it the fear of rejection? Is it uncertainty? Is it failure? Is it comparing yourself with others? And it's the fear of being behind? If you know the main reason, you can deal with the issue more effectively. The next step is encounter the pessimistic ideas, the negative thoughts, the rumination. Fear is frequently stalked by unfavorable ideas and perceptions about the circumstances and yourself. Fear comes from your limiting beliefs, the beliefs that will not serve you. So by facing those negative thoughts and asking yourself whether these ideas, these thoughts are logical and supported by evidence, then you will be able to challenge them. Positive and realistic thoughts should take the place of negative ones. How you can do that? The best way, as I always talk about, is the miracle of pen and paper. The moment you experience the fear, you feel it deeply in your bones, write it down. What are you afraid of? What is the main source of this fear? What's killing you alive here? Write it down. And then you can alter each thought with the one that is more realistic and at the same time positive. The next step goes back to the fear of taking action, which will be dividing the task that you are afraid of or the actions, the acts that you're supposed to perceive into smaller steps. If the task at hand seems to be so big, so difficult, so humongous for you that it brings different kind of fears for you, it's much better to divide it to smaller steps and more doable ones, right? Instead of attempting to do everything at once and bringing the perfectionism into the game, concentrate on finishing one step at a time. And then plan and get ready. Remember, fear comes when anxiety kicks in. So in order to manage your anxiety and reduce it, the best could be planning and getting ready prior to take action. Being organized might help reducing your anxiety. Spend some time on organizing, jotting down your plans after facing the root causes of your fear. Researching the necessary course of action. Having a well-defined plan of action can help you feel more confident and less anxious. And last 
but not least is imagining yourself that you have succeeded. Take some time to picture yourself accomplishing the task and reaching your objectives. You may change your perspective and increase your self-confidence by using visualization. The visual board is one of the best tools that can help you to face your future, vision it, see the triggers upon planning and work on it. And my friends, seek assistance. Never be afraid to ask for help and encouragement from friends, family or mentors or people who you trust. Speaking with people who you trust about your anxiety might reduce the anxiety, might help you to face your fear in a different way and might offer insightful feedback. Taking good care of your physical and mental health will help you to deal with fear more skillfully. Remember, activities like walking, meditating, dancing, painting, writing, or spending some time in nature will help you a lot to look at your surroundings in a different way and face your fear with more courage and enthusiasm and be patient. If your fear is very strong, you might want to explore approaching it little by little. By gradually exposing yourself to the frightening scenarios, you can gradually become less afraid of being judged or failing and gain more confidence. Remember, we need to accept the discomfort. It's natural, it's normal to feel uncomfortable when we face with fear. But that's also the point at which learning and development happen. Accept the discomfort as a normal part of the journey and have faith in your capacity to go through it. Dealing with your fear and succeeding in this path one step at a time will help you to gain more self-confidence and be more comfortable with the rest of your path. My friends, I hope this episode was helpful for you. I really appreciate your company. I really appreciate your nice comments. And I would love to hear back from you what kind of other topics you want me to talk about. Till next episode, take good care of yourself.